Hey you guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and this is my last video of my series where I teach you guys how to make a blog in React.js and this video is going to be actually really quick because we don't have any, like, we don't have a lot to do. You can see that we have like our main page with all the blog posts and if we click on one, you can go on an individual route which includes only that, that single blog post. But we're going to be working a bit with the UI so that we make it a little bit more uh, visual, like, visually appealing. So yeah, that, that's basically what we're going to do in this video. So we have here our application and we, it is the same from where we left off. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to edit the post tag right here because currently it's, it's just like this. And we're actually going to also add another uh, part to this class name. And the reason for this is because we're currently using the same uh, class name for both this type of post and this type of post. However, we want it to be different because this goes in the main page, it has a different structure, and this one is individual for this page. So let's add another property, another class name to this div. Basically, it's going to be called individual. And you can see that when we when we refresh it, it's still the same because we haven't made any edit yet. So let's go to our app.css. And over here, we're going to grab the dot post dot individual individual and you can see that for example if we make our background color equal to like something crazy like uh, green you can see that now the background color for this page and this div is green however for this one is not because this doesn't include the individual tag in the class name so let's go back here let's remove this and what we're going to do is we're basically going to set a, a width to like a max width to the to the text right to the div so the max width would be probably like um i would say 60 percent i don't want to make it that big so you can see that now it's like it decreased the size however we also want to center it in the middle so we can come here and let's look back here this is all wrapped around this kind of post right However, we want to make another div, which is going to be the individual post div. So it's it's like a page, right? So if we come here and write div and write a class name and give it to individual post, basically this will be the wrapper around the whole page. This will contain everything below here for any route that includes an individual post. So let's go down here at the closing tag. Wait, here. Yeah, now it's worth anything. Yeah. And if we grab our, our class name individual post, and we basically made make it a display flex with a justify content center, you can see that now everything is centered in the middle. And what we basically want to, the, the structure now looks, in my opinion, really good. So basically this is how it looks, right? And finally, this is like the only change I actually had to do. Uh, the last thing I want to make is very simple. I want to be able to like something, like a, like a post. So there will be like a like button right here, and I want to be able to give it a like. So we're going to do this by basically creating a like button right next to a to a post. So let's go to our to our. Let me close this. Let me close this. Let's go to our main page, and in every post we want to add right next to the the username. We want to add a button. So let me add a button, which is going to basically be called like and on click. Okay. And just for simplicity reasons, uh, you can, you're able to like it how many times you want. This is not a social media website. If you guys want, I can definitely make a series because I've done several projects before which involve giving likes and being able to like dislike and, and like and save all that information on the database. However, in this case, the only thing we're going to do is basically if you want to like this post, you can click on the button and it will update in your screen and it's also going to update in the database. So yeah, that's basically it. And we're going to give it an on-click event, which is going to be a function, which we're going to create right here. So const like post. And this function will basically make a post request to our database and change the information from our database. So let's come here and on the on click let's basically pass the function like post and let's go to our backend because in our backend we're going to be accessing a, a field in our database which we haven't created yet 
So if we open our database right here, so you can see that in our database, there's only like one, two, three, four, four uh, columns, right? We want to add one more. So if we come here and basically click on alter table, you can see that now we can make more changes. We're going to add a field called, um, let me think, likes. And it's going to be, yeah, let, let me change this to integer. And it can be null. Uh, it can also be an assigned. Yeah, this is basically what a like will be. It's just a number that will be incrementing every time that we click the button, right? So you can see that now when we refresh this query, there's a like column, like a likes column right here. And this is important because we now can make our endpoint that will be able to increase the likes. So let's come here and write app dot post. And we're going to create a, a, an API route for this. So API slash like, and let's basically create a require and a response. And inside of here, we're going to pass all of our logic. So what we want to do is we basically want to query something. So let me grab this, we're going to make a MySQL query. And in order to make that query, we need to be able to know what like the amount of likes we currently have in our database. There's several ways you can do this. One of them is just selecting the amount of likes and inserting a new amount of like, like inserting that amount plus one. However, that this is not what we want to do because that would be making two queries in its own. So in our case, what we're going to do is be able to use some of my MySQL's simple uh, syntax in order to increase the value of that column. So if you, for example, change this to update the name of the table, which is blog posts, I guess, let me see. I think it's just posts, right? Yeah, it's posts. So update posts set the name of the column. So likes equal to likes plus one. And this is like normal logic in programming. It's just like when you want to increment something, you set it equal to likes plus one. So you're setting the, the value equal to itself plus one. We want to specify that we want to do this whenever ID is equal to something. Yeah, we're going to alter stuff based on the ID and we're going to send this ID through our front end. So if we come here and we just say rec, uh, no, actually const ID equals to rec, uh, rec dot body dot ID. We're going to pass this value right here. And since it's only one value, we don't need to pass an array. We can just pass in the, the value itself. So now we have this and this should be working. So let's go to our front end and let's make the logic work. So since we we're rendering a new like button on every single uh, iteration through our post list, basically what we can do is we can add a, a parameter to that like post function where we'll be, we'll be passing the ID from that post individually. So instead of just writing like post, uh, how we have right here, we actually need to pass, we need we actually need to pass a lambda function, which is basically a, a function without a name. So we're basically adding a function just like we do when we're trying to uh, make an on change event on an input, and we want to grab whatever is being written on the input, we're doing the same right here, because we now want to pass a value from the map function inside of this parameter. So like post will take one argument, which will be ID. And in our case, we want to grab the value dot ID, as you can see right here, since we can grab like this a value basically means the object. So the post itself, and if we want to grab the ID, we can just say value dot ID. And now in our like post, we can just write axios dot post, sorry, axios dot post, and we can pass the URL. So let's come here and write local post 3001. And let's grab the URL so that we can pass over here. And actually, I'll pass this through parameters so through yeah, it's through, par through to the arguments in the in the URL. So we're going to use the back uh, quotes, uh, instead of this one, so we can pass some uh, some values inside of the of the string. So I think it is API slash likes, right? Yeah. And now we want to pass a value right here, we want to pass the string, the 
ID from our function. So as you can see, we're basically reaching the API slash like route and we're passing the ID through the parameters. And when we finish this, we want to pass a promise, which will basically grab the response, the response, which is basically the same thing as data. I just changed the name right here. You can name it whatever you want. And this response will basically for now, just console.log, or actually let me just alert a message in our screen saying, you like to post, right? So we just want to make sure that everything worked. And now if we go back to our, to our backend, instead of rec.buddy.id, as we did for any objects we're passing through our, our API post, we're actually going to use rec.params.id. And we're going to change this to a slash, um, a colon, and the name of the variable, so id. And if we try to like, it should be working. So let's go to our database right here. Let's refresh it. And you can see that none of them has likes. So if we come here to, for example, uh, this one and we click like, oh, actually it went directly to, to the page itself. Let's, let's see if, if it changed in a database. It didn't. And I actually know why, because currently all the values are null. So we want to change that, right? This was a mistake when I was creating the database, the, the table, sorry. So we want to change this to, it can't be null. And instead the default value is zero. So if we apply this, you can see that it works. And now if we come back and we try, like we refresh this, everything is zero. If we come to our main page and for now, I'm going to remove the functionality where if you click on the, on the post, you go to the page. So let's come here and remove this. Uh, it's basically this. Let's remove this. And now when you click on the like button right here, you can see that it should update on the database. So let's come here. And now you can see that this post has a like. So if you click again and we refresh our database, it should have two likes. Yeah, so it's working and we wanna get a visual for that. So we're also gonna make a select statement from our database in order to see how many likes the post has. So instead of just like doing it all separately, we want to basically just update constantly based on whatever information we're getting. So if we come here, now our object will also contain a likes field instead of just the title, the post text and the name. So if you come here and we change this to give it an H4 as well, and just write vol.likes, you can see that if we refresh this, everything has the likes and this one has two, which is cool, right? We actually want to make both of this right next to each other. So div, we want to put a div around them. So uh, slash div, and this should be username, no, class name. Now let me just call it bottom. Like it's just the bottom of the post and we can come here and not, not here, actually the CSS and just come here and write dot bottom and just make it a display inline. Let me see if it works. Um, no, it didn't work. Let me actually just make it display flex and give it a flex direction, right? That, that, that should make sense. Flex direction and make it flex direction row. When we save this, you can see that now everything are next to each other and everything fits perfectly. What we want to do is we also want to add a padding to it. So not a padding. We just want to grab all the H4 inside of it. So uh, the H4, which are both the, 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 your name, the, your username and the amount of likes. And instead of doing this, we just want to give it a margin so that each of them are kind of far from each other. We're going to give it five pixels, but let's see how it looks. Yeah, it looks good, right? So you can see there's the like, the username, and it should be working for each one of them. So this is basically it. I was just playing around and uh, I started liking stuff. So basically, this is the video. Uh, the only thing I could do next is, I don't know, create like a way to comment stuff. Like this is, this are a lot more advanced stuff. So I'm definitely going to make a, a type of rest API video series where I try to make, for example, uh, I don't know, like a, a clone of YouTube where I'm going to be teaching you guys how to like videos, how to uh, comment on like create comment sections, 
how to follow people. Like there's a bunch of a range of different topics that I could talk about. And I just don't think that they fit on this series. So I wanted to make this video quick. I 100% think that it, it isn't actually quick because we actually did a lot more than I expected. But I hope you guys enjoyed this series. If you have any questions, please, please leave a comment down below. I now have a Discord. So I answer a lot of questions there if you guys want to see it. Uh, there's actually no members for now because I literally just created it. But if you want to ask me questions, go to my Discord or comment down below. I answer both of them. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I see you guys next time.